Alright, um, here's the review for the Chapter 7 test. <coughs> First of all, uh, we're going to go over these formulas that you see up here, which will be on the test, but you'll need to know um, how to use them. So, uh, just starting at the top, <coughs> we have this formula right here, which is just the formula for the explicit um, arithmetic sequence. Uh, so explicit arithmetic. Um, the reason why I know it's arithmetic is because we have uh, this D here, which means that there's going to be a common difference in our sequence. And so if there's a common difference, it has to be arithmetic. <coughs> and then here, um, a sub 1, or sorry, um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, and it's, it, it's explicit because we're defined in terms of n. Now, over on this side, you'll also see that we have the common difference here. So this one is the recursive. Um, arithmetic and it's recursive I know it's recursive because of this term right here a sub n minus 1 which means a sub n minus 1 means the term before a sub n um, so a sub n is the nth term this is the term before that so, um, so over here we just have the nth term what is it equal to equal to a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times the common difference. The recursive is much more simple. It's just the term before plus the common difference. So that's the difference. Um, here, this is the explicit geometric Um, and I know it's geometric because it uses R, and that's for the common ratio. And then a sub 1 is the first term, a sub n, oh. excuse me, is the nth term. n is the number of terms. So yeah, I didn't really mention that before. n is the number of terms, n minus 1. Um, this one is the recursive geometric And again, I know it's recursive because it uses the term before or a sub n minus 1. Common ratio, so on and so forth. Okay, and these last three right here, these are series, summations, rather th uh, or partial sums rather than sequences. So this is the partial sum formula of an arithmetic series. So partial... arithmetic uh, series. Okay, and so the reason why I know it's arithmetic, uh, partial arithmetic, is because um, there's uh, well, there's no R. As you see in the other ones, we use R, which is the common ratio, which is meant for geometric here. Doesn't, uh, you don't see any common difference or anything, but that's how I know. So a sub 1 is the first term, a sub n is the nth term, divide by 2 times by n, and n means the number of terms. Okay, These two are for geometric series. So geometric series this one is a partial sum. This one is an infinite sum. Um, maybe we'll talk about the differences as we get to some more s examples, but um, yeah. So infinite sum 
partial sum. Okay, so now that we've named all these, let's uh, go through the review. Um, okay, so for number one, well, not every, just so you know, not every sequence, not every problem is going to contain an arithmetic or a geometric. It might just contain just a just its uh, sequence or series. In this case right here, uh, this is not geometric or arithmetic. It's neither. Um, but in any case, so write the first six terms of the sequence. So if I want to find the first term, which we denote as a sub 1, you just plug 1 in for n. And in this case, do negative 1 squared plus 1. Well, if I'm doing my order of operations correctly, that's going to be negative 1 because 1 squared is 1, then you multiply by negative, so in total it's going to be negative 1 plus 1, and it's going to be 0. So that's my first term. To find a sub 2, I'm going to plug in 2. So negative 2 squared plus 1. That's going to become negative 4 because I'm going to square this before I multiply by a negative plus 1 that's going to give me negative 3. That's a sub 2. And we're going to go all the way to a sub 6. Okay, so really if you just notice the pattern really can skip a, a bunch of math. So for a sub 3 I'm just going to square 3 and then make it negative so it's going to be negative 9 plus 1 it's going to be negative 8. For a sub 4, I'm going to square 4, which will be 16. Negative 16 because it's negative. So negative 16 plus 1, that's going to be negative 15. And then 5 squared, that's going to be negative 25 plus 1, negative 24. 6 squared times by negative is going to be negative 36 plus 1. It's going to be negative 35. Okay, uh, writing, uh, so in this case right here, uh, these problems right here, we have the sequences. I know they're sequences because the commas. Uh, you're going to write the next term and write a rule for the nth term of the sequence. So what would be the next term if you follow this pattern? Well, I see here that the denominators are staying the same. So I know that in the next term, the denominator is going to have to stay the same. In the numerator, it's just increasing by 1. So I'm just going to say n. So now as for the rule, that means a sub n. So a sub n is our, uh, sorry, I don't know why I said n, 5. It's increasing by 5. And for the rule, that would be n over 6. And there we go. So the next term would be 5 over 6. If I wanted to write a rule that would give me any term, a sub n uh, is equal to n divided by 6 would be the, the rule for it. Okay. Um, and this one right here, I see 1, 4, 9, 16, 25. This here is not geometric or arithmetic, so um, don't try and put it into one of those. Um, in this case right here, I can just see that in this sequence, all of these terms are just perfect squares. 1 squared, 2 squared, 3 squared, 4 squared, 5 squared. So the next one's going to have to be 36, and therefore the rule is just going to be n squared. Okay, in this case, and this, and these ones build the series, find the sum. Um, okay, so it's a series, and here's the rule for the series. So in order to build the series, we're just going to plug in numbers one through six. Okay, so if you plug in one, you're going to get one squared minus three. That's going to come out to be negative two. Plus, because this is a series. And then I'm going to plug in 2. 2 squared is 4. 4 minus 3 is 1. Plug in 3. 3 squared is 9. 9 minus 3 is 6. Plug in 4. 4 squared, that's 16. Minus 3, it's going to be 13. Plug in 5. 5 squared is 25. Minus 3, it's 22. And then plug in 6. 6 squared is 36. Minus 3, it's going to be 33. Okay. Add these all up, and then you'll find the sum. 
don't currently have that with me, but that's what we'll go there. Okay, <coughs> same thing for the next one. Let's build the series. So for the series, we're just going to plug in 1. So if I plug in 1, I get 2 over 1. That's 2. And then if I plug in 2, I get 2 over 2. Well, that's 1. If I plug in 3, that's 2 thirds. Plug in 4, that's 2 fourths or 1 half. Plug in 5, that's 2 fifths. And then 2 sixths. And then, so there's the series built out. Add them all up, and you'll get your sum. You can leave this as a fraction or as a decimal. I don't really mind. Um, just whenever you're putting this in your calculator, you probably want to put parentheses around here as you go. Okay. <coughs> uh, for each of the following, tell whether the sequence is arithmetic or geometric. Uh, that's for A. For B, you're going to write an explicit rule for the nth term of the sequence. And C, you're going to find the seventh term. Alright, so tell whether this sequence here is arithmetic or geometric. So 0 to negative 4, negative 4 to negative 8, negative 8 to negative 12. That is decreasing by 4 each time. So you're subtracting 4 as you move on. So that's arithmetic. And the common difference here is negative 4. So you can use your formula up here if you need it. Explicit arithmetic. A sub n is going to be equal to, I, I write it in a different way than what's listed up there. I usually write it as um, the common difference, negative 4 times by n minus 1 plus a sub 1, which is the first term. So in this case, it's 0. You can see it's, it's still the same thing. I just wrote. I just wrote this out in front of this, and then I moved this in front of that. So, uh, in front of this term, sorry. And then, if you want, you can simplify this by distributing. Uh, also, the zero is not going to mean anything. So, negative 4n minus 4. So, this would be simplified. This would not be. I don't mind either way. As for a sub 7, just going to plug 7 in here, or if you didn't simplify, just plug it in right there. So negative 4 times by 7 minus 4. So negative 4 times 7, that's negative 28, minus 4, negative 32. Okay. Um, as for this one right here, 162 to 54 to 18 to 6. So this is geometric. So um, if you're never quite sure how to tell, all you really need to do is take two terms in um, the sequence so and then divide them. But you want to divide the term after by the term before. So 54 divided by 162, 18 divided by 54, 6 divided by 8. And all of that will just uh, come out to be one third. So yeah, so this one, uh, because it's dividing or be, uh, multiplying, whenever you multiply or divide by something that's the same, that's a common ratio. So um, it's dividing by 4, or you can say multiplying by 1 fourth, I guess you can say. Um, but yeah, I'm probably going to use this right here. So my bases, so. Um, my common ratio is one fourth, and the uh, where is it? Explicit geometric right here. A sub one is the first term. R is the common ratio. N minus one. Um, so this is geometric. So A sub n is going to be equal to A sub one, which is one sixty two times by the common ratio, which is 1 fourth, raised to the n minus 1 power. Here's your rule. No need to simplify, especially do not multiply those together. All right, and then for the seventh term, you can just plug 7 in right here. So 162 times by 1 fourth to the sixth power, whenever you plug in 7, 
So um, 162 divided by 4 raised to the 6. Um, you're going to get a um, decimal for sure. And that's okay. Or if you want, you can write it as 162 over 4 to the 6. And 4 to the 6 power is 6 and then 192 divided by 162 divided by that 0 0.0396 something like that okay all right there's the first page uh, for the next page write an explicit rule for the nth term of the sequence so we're going to be using explicit rules and you can see these right here, the information given here is incomplete. So when it says write an explicit rule right here, you're likely to be writing your explicit arithmetic or explicit geometric. So a sub n is equal to n, uh, sorry, common difference times by n minus 1 plus a sub 1. That's the explicit arithmetic a sub n is equal to um, a sub 1 times by r to the n minus 1. This is your g metric. Now, usually in these formulas, you would put in the common difference for arithmetic and the first term. And for geometric, you'd put in the, the ratio and the first term. But notice that in the information provided, we only are given the ratio or the, uh, sorry, the common difference or the ratio. Um, in neither case are we given the first term. We're only given uh, a random term in its sequence. And so that is up to you to find the first term in order to complete this. Okay, so the formula at the end, you'll have a sub n is equal to, in this case, 2 times by n minus 1 plus a sub 1, but you need to find a sub 1. Um, so that's what we're going to do. So in order to help me find a sub 1, I'm going to plug in this information into my formula. So 14 means the number of terms. So that's going to be n. So this is going to turn into 14 minus 1 or 13. I already know my common difference is 2. And again, I don't know a sub 1. Now because I'm using the number of terms, 14, I'm going to plug in 5 for a sub n because uh, this means the 14th term and the 14th term is 5. So I'll put in 5 right here since I'm using the number of terms to be 14. And then now that I've done that, well the only unknown thing that I have is a sub 1 meaning I can solve for it. So I'm going to subtract 26 because that's what 2 times 13 is. Subtract 26 from both sides. So so that's going to be negative 21 is equal to a sub 1. And there you go. So bring this back down here. Replace that a sub 1 with 21. There you go. There's your formula. OK, I'll do the same thing here. Um, well, uh, I know that I'm going to have a sub n is equal to a sub 1, which I don't know. My common ratio is 5 to the n minus 1. What's left for me to do is find a sub 1. So um, I'm going to plug in this information that I do have. So n is going to be 5. So I'm going to plug that right there. And then 1250 is going to be a sub n. So 1250 is going to be equal to a sub 1, which I don't know, times by 5 raised to the fourth power, because 5 minus 1 will be 4. And then um, in this case, I'll divide by, well, 5 to the 4th power is 625. And I believe that's just going to be 2. So, there you go. a sub 1 is equal to 2. Let's get this back down here. This is my formula. Only this time I'm going to replace that with 2. Okay. And there you go. Um, for this next one, write an explicit rule for the nth term 
of the arithmetic sequence. So a sub n is equal to n times by, uh, sorry, not n, common difference times by n minus 1 plus a sub 1. And um, notice that in this one right here, we don't even have the common difference like we did before. We have a, we have two random terms in the sequence. Now, it really wouldn't be that hard to, to figure out what a sub 1 is and what the common difference is. Um, you know, you go from 6 to 10, that's, uh, that's four more terms. So what is the difference between those four terms divided by 4? And you can, you can get that, which is essentially what we're going to be doing. But you can figure it out without using what um, the method that I'm going to use. But um, yeah, so I'm going to be using a systems of equations to help me solve this. And pretty much the systems of equations is just a very procedural way of what I just explained. The difference between these two terms is there's four terms from a, a sub 6 to a sub 10. And I'm just going to find the difference between them and I'm going to divide by four essentially. But so in order to show that, I'm going to take this information here and plug it in. So I plug in 53 for a sub n, I'm going to plug in 10 for n, and then I'm going to have uh, the common difference in a sub n unknown. So uh, for my first equation, 53 is going to be equal to the common difference, which I don't know, times by 9 plus a sub 1. And then I'm going to do the same thing, but with this right here, I'm going to plug in 37 and plug in 6 there. So 37 is going to be equal to the common difference times by, and this time uh, that's going to be 5 when you subtract 1 from 6 plus a sub 1. Okay, now we have this systems of equations, and then I am going to subtract. Um, so I'll do 53, subtract 37, and that's going to give me 16, equal to 4d whenever I subtract 9d and 5d, and then these are going to cancel. Okay, now look right here. The difference between 37 and 53 is 16. And how many terms between a sub 6 and a sub 10? 4. So divide that by 4. And you get your common difference to be 4. So there you go. Now you still need to find a sub 1. So how to find a sub 1? Well, uh, you can just plug this into either one of these equations right here. So I'll plug it into this one right here. So I get 37 is equal to 4 times by 5 plus a sub 1. And 4 times 5 is 20. Subtract 20, and I'll get a sub 1 is equal to 17. So finally, I can fill in my nth term formula. a sub n is equal to my common difference, which is 4, n minus 1 plus 17. There you go. Um, as for the next one, it was meant to be set up like this one right here where you were given two terms, but uh, I decided not to use that. And so this is just set up like this problem right here, so if you want to practice that, you can do that. Okay, evaluate um, sums. So for these four right here, these are summations you can see here, but they are also partial sums. And the reason why I know that they are partial sums is because... Uh, in the notation, the what goes above the sigma is uh, where you stop the series at the number of terms. So from term 1 to term 8, from term 1 to term 6, from term 1 to term 8, from term 1 to term 7. Now you also have to be able to identify if they are geometric or arithmetic. So if you look at the rules given to them, that's um, arithmetic. Arithmetic, because they resemble, I guess the best way I can explain is that they're like um, uh, linear functions, which are pretty much the same thing as an arithmetic sequence. Um, these right here are exponential. They resemble exponential functions, which are geometric sequences. So um, exponents, I can tell that. So these are geometric. These are arithmetic. Um, formulas are, are, again, given on the first page. So for arithmetic, 
n is the number of terms, a sub 1, which is the first term, a sub n, which is the last term, divided by 2. So n, um, in this case, is going to be 8. So s sub 8 is going to be equal to 8. a sub 1, well, to find a sub 1, I'm going to plug 1 into my series. So 9 times 1, which is 9, plus 1, that's going to be 10, plus a sub 8, if I want to find a sub 8, I'm going to plug 8 in. So we get 9 times 8, and then we're going to add 1, that's going to be 73, divided by 2. That's going to be 8 times by 83, divided by 2. I'm going to, since 83 doesn't divide evenly, you can just put this into a calculator, but since I'm just doing it by hand, 8 divided by 2 is 4, uh, 4 times by 83, and that you can plug into a calculator. Um, uh, 332. There you go. So that's going to be the sum of the first eight terms. We'll do the same thing here, okay? All right. Um, uh, you can just check my key on Canvas to see if you got it right, okay? Um, I'll do an example here. So this one's geometric. So S sub n is equal to um, uh, a sub 1 times by 1 minus r to the n over 1 minus r. So a sub 1 is the first term, which you can find by plugging in whatever this is. So you plug in 1, I get 1 minus 1 as my exponent, which would be 0, and 2 to the 0 power is 1. So a sub 1 is going to be equal to 1. You know what? I'm going to do 15 since I think that one's going to be more difficult. But um, Nah, I'll stick with this one. Okay, so um, a sub one, so s sub a is going to be equal to one times by one minus r is the common ratio, which is given right there, two. The base of the exponential is there, uh, two, and then to the n power, n is the number of terms, which again is going to be from one to eight, so that's going to be eight over one minus uh, two. So 1 minus 2 raised to the 8th power, that's n, um, negative 255 divided by negative 1, which is going to be 255. There you go. Um, I'll do this one here because there's it's just some things to watch out for. Um, so s sub 7 is going to be equal to, we need a sub 1. Now, yeah, so you plug in 1. 1 minus 1, that's going to be 0. 3, negative 3 to the 0 power is going to be 1, but that's also going to be multiplied by negative 2. So negative 2 is my first term. Okay, then 1 minus my ratio is negative 3. And then I'm going to have 7 terms. Over 1 plus 3, I'll write that in the next step. So minus negative, that's going to turn to a positive. In any case, so we'll have negative 2. If you do 1 minus negative 3, make sure that's in parentheses, by the way, the negative 3 raised to the 7th power. That's 2, 188 divided by 1 plus 3, which is going to be 4. Okay, so that's going to come out to be... Um, negative 1,094 when you use a calculator or do it by hand. Okay. Um, all right. Okay, uh, so for this one, the partial sums S1 through S5 of an infinite geometric series are shown in the graph. Is there a finite sum to this infinite series? If so, what do you think it is? So you can see these points represent the partial sum. So the first partial sum is a little bit more than 0.3. And then the next one's 0.5. And the 
next one's just a little bit less than 0 0.6, then a little bit more than 0 0.6, then a little bit higher than that. So for me, I'm thinking that wherever this is leveling off to, I'm thinking it's going to be less than 0 0.7. I'm thinking that this is probably going to be something like two-thirds, which is about equal to 0 0.667, something like that. That's what I'm thinking that it is. Now, if you say 0 0.7, I'll probably give you, I'll, I'll give you points for that, if you were to put something like that. If it was more than 0 0.7, I'd probably say no. Um, obviously, if you said that no, it doesn't seem that there's a um, a finite sum. You'll get that wrong too, because it does seem like that this list of partial sums is not going to increase past something like that. So, okay, uh, that's all that's needed there. When does an infinite geometric series not have an infinite uh, a finite sum? So, when the common ratio, the absolute value of your common ratio is less than one, then the geometric series will have a finite sum. Basically saying, so let's say if we go back up here, this geometric series the ratio is 2, um, which is greater than 1, meaning that if I were to let this go to infinity rather than just find a partial sum, we could not find it. There's, th it, it would not be, you couldn't find it. There's no, there is no infinite sum of this series right here because the ratio is greater than 1. Same thing over here. If I take the absolute value of this right here, which would be 3, then if I and I were to let this go to infinity rather than just 7, well, I couldn't because um, it would just keep getting larger and larger, so there's no finite sum. The only time that it's possible to find a finite sum of a geometric series is if the ratio is, the absolute value of your common ratio is less than 1. So here, when does an infinite geometric series not have a finite sum? When the absolute value of R is greater than or equal to 1. Okay. Find the sum of the geometric series if it exists. So again, it might not exist. Um, depend, uh, notice that these are all these are all um, infinite series. Infinite series. So in this case, the ratio is 1 fourth. So yes, I can find this one. This one right here, negative 1 third. Well, that's the same thing as this series up here, but I'm not letting it go to a finite sum or a finite term, so this is going to infinity, but I can't. This is not going to have a sum. I can't find it. It's just going to keep getting smaller and smaller or larger and larger. Okay, so let's start with this one right here. Um, so for this one, the sum is going to be equal to, this is up on the first page too, by the way, finite versus uh, partial, so we're going to be using this one. So the sum is going to be equal to a sub 1, which goes um, on top a sub 1 over 1 minus r. a sub 1, if I plug in 1 right here, 1 minus 1 is 0. Anything to the zero power is going to be one times by negative six, so negative six is my first term over one minus my common ratio, and my common ratio is one fourth. So I get negative six over one minus one fourth is three fourths. You can use a calculator if you want. That's the same thing as negative six times by four thirds. So negative six times four. That's going to be. Um, so negative 8, I think that should come out to be. Okay. Now for this one right here. So S is going to be equal to my first term, which is 3. Um, over 1 minus 
well, hold up, what's my common ratio? Well, I'm going to have to take this term right here and divide it by the term before, or any of these. Take that, divide it by the term before. Um, but you can kind of already see what's happening. 3 to 3 halves to 3 fourths, 3 eighths. Um, this right here is just, this is just 3 divided by 2. If you divide by 2 again, that's going to be 4. If you divide by 2, that's going to be 8. So it looks like the common ratio is um, 3 halves. Uh, sorry, 1 half, not 3 halves, 1 half. Looks like we're just dividing by 2. So divide by 2, divide by 2, divide by 2. Well, that's going to be 3 over 1 half, which is going to be 3 times by 2, which is equal to 6. Okay. Alright, uh, for this last page right here, we're going to move on to recursives. So write the first six terms of the sequence given the recursive equation. Note that this is not arithmetic or geometric, because we're being squared right here, which doesn't happen in... So meaning there's no common ratio and there's no common difference. Alright, so um, write the first six terms. Well, in a recursive rule, you always need the term that comes first. So I already know the first term. Now to find a sub 2. Uh, this shouldn't be too hard. You don't really have to use the formula. But here's what it would look like if you did. a sub 2 is going to be equal to... So you can see here that we're using n for 2. Uh, 2 for n, sorry. So if I plug in n right, uh, 2 for n, that's going to be 2 minus 1. Well, that's going to be a sub 1. It's being squared, plus 2. Okay, well, a sub 1 was defined before as 1. So this is 1 squared. Plus 2, well, that's going to be 3. Okay, and you do the same thing to find a sub 3. So a sub 3 is going to be equal to a sub 3 minus 1. Well, 3 minus 1 is going to be 2. And then you're going to square that plus 2. So uh, a sub 2, well, that's the term that comes before a sub 3. So that's going to be 9 plus 2 is going to be 11. And then so, so if you see the pattern, it's really not bad. So to find the, the fourth one, well, I'm just going to take the term before. 11 squared, which is 121, plus 2, so this is going to be 123. And then for the next one, I'm going to square this one, and then I'm going to add 2, so 123 squared, times by 2, and I get 3258. And then I'm going to square that one. It's going to be very large, and then I'm going to add 2. Um, I think I did that in my calculator right. So 3258 squared times by 2, or sorry, plus 2. Maybe I did do it right. I'm actually not sure. Uh, it doesn't feel like it's right, but 123 squared. Squared plus 2. Okay, yeah, so I didn't do that right. That's not the right answer right there. So 123 squared plus 2 is 15,131. Okay, you square that, plus 2. Okay, one second. 15,131 squared. Okay, I think this is right, but maybe I'm messing something up. Uh, 228... Nine four seven one six three. Okay, and I think that should be good. Okay, and that's all you'll do for that one. Uh, write a recursive rule for the sequence. Now these ones will be specific to arithmetic or geometric. Okay, so let's look at these ones and see what they are. So. 3 to negative 1 to negative 5 to negative 9. Um, 3 to negative 1, that's... Looks like we're subtracting 4. So we're subtracting 4, this is going to be arithmetic. So for uh, the sequence, uh, the rule for uh, recursive arithmetic, a sub n is equal to a sub n minus 1 plus the common difference. 
So a sub n equal to a sub n minus 1 minus 4. So this would be the rule, but for a recursive rule, you always have to give the first term in order to use it. So a sub 1 is equal to 3. So that would be correct right there. And then here, negative 2 to negative 8, that's timesing by 2. That's timesing by, um, sorry, timesing by 4. Timesing by 4, timesing by 4. Yeah. So this is geometric. a sub n is equal to uh, the common ratio times by a sub n minus 1. So a sub n is equal to the common ratio is negative 4 times by a sub n minus 1. And always make sure to give the first term in order to use it. Okay. Um, for this one right here, it's uh, match the explicit formulas with the recursive formulas. So here we have explicit, here are recursive, you have to match them. So I'm going to look at this one right here. This is recursive, uh, uh, this is arithmetic and it has a common difference of negative 4. So I'm going to go over here and see this one's arithmetic, this one's geometric. Maybe I'll start with that. This one's definitely arithmetic. This one's geometric, this one's geometric, that one's arithmetic. Arithmetic, arithmetic, geometric, yeah, geometric. So I know that that's how they're going to have to match. So this one's going to go with this one or with this one. This one has a common difference of negative 8. So negative 4, negative 4. So yeah, this one's going to be A. This one's arithmetic. It's got a common difference of negative 8. I can see because it's next to the variable n. And there you go, you can see that that's also the same thing here. So this one's going to be D. Um, this one has a common ratio of 6. This one has a common ratio of 5. 6, 5. So B, C. Okay, there you go, and that's the review. So hopefully it helps.